All right. Yay. I'm so glad that we made this happen. Thank you, Courtney, so much for joining me. Um, Courtney is an amazing uh, practitioner and uh, has a really inspiring healing story of her own. And so I really wanted to come on here and, and let her share a bit about that. Um, so yeah, thank you again, Courtney. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's just start. Um, you can share a little bit about uh, your health journey, especially towards the beginning, um, like, uh, you know, when things were really at their worst for you, what did that look like? And, and what were you struggling with? Yeah, um, let's see. It was so many years ago now. I don't <laughs> even know how many. Um, yeah. I was an athlete and... <sighs> I was able to run like eight, 10 miles a day. And then all of a sudden I could run half a mile one day and then yeah. I could run eight miles the next day. And, um, my body started to become inconsistent. Yeah. Um, that was one of the first things I started noticing. And then I started noticing that, um, I got a dairy intolerance and I was oh. like, Oh, this, this must be the issue. Right. Okay. Yeah. Intolerance. <laughs> And then, um, I, then I started bloating and my belly started bloating and bloating and bloating till it was like six months bloated. Um, and then to save a really long story short is I had, I was in the process of hitting my tipping point. So through my life, I had been through multiple rounds of antibiotics. I had been, um, I had been on different rounds of psychopharmaceuticals so like antidepressants and stuff for mm. um conditions that they told me i would have for my life which weren't accurate yeah. <laughs> um and so in this tipping point i was living in a house with mold but i didn't know it at the time and um basically i continued to get sicker with random weird symptoms hair loss bruising cold I had to like keep my head up against the wall at work. I couldn't keep my head up. Oh wow. Um, wow. I yeah, my whole world had sort of changed. And so um I kept going to Western medicine and they were like, You're the picture of health. And um <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm not well. And the gastroenterologist, I said, Okay, um the last year when I was here I couldn't eat three foods. Now, um I can't eat like 20 foods. And he said, um, everybody has gas and bloating. And I was like, no, you don't understand. I can't eat foods. And he was like, have you seen our psychiatry department? And I was like, I don't need a psychiatrist. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, then I kept doing research and I found out, wow, I have SIBO. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to him and I said, I have a permeable gut. And he said, that's not such a thing that <laughs> there is no such thing. And um, that's when I figured out that the, the doctors were not going to be able to help me at all. Yeah. Um, and then I flew myself to the SIBO Center in Portland. And mm. uh, I worked with Allison C. Becker's people for a while. Oh, okay. And then I got better, but only sort of. And my, my health Can I ask journey what, was what was their treatment for SIBO there? Like, what did they recommend yeah. for you? Well, so, so at the time, they gave three options, an elemental diet um herbal protocols antibiotic um or no fiber which is now like carnivore what people call carnivore mm -hmm. um basically they had me do long bouts of kill supplements yeah which um, made me better yeah did not yeah. recover me yes um and i guess I like your symptoms went away but you didn't really like sort regain of. your vitality and yeah. yeah right, right, right like i mean it was better than it was yeah and then i went to a handful of other natural practitioners and i got mostly better but i also had other symptoms that continued to get worse like my light sensitivity and sound sensitivity and i couldn't wear earrings i started to become um sensitive to my whole environment um i couldn't go into box stores i um, I couldn't take any supplements. I was hyper reactive to everything. And, um, I hired this woman and I was looking to get rid of one symptom. And she said, you have limbic system impairment. And I said, what's that? And, um, so then I looked into limbic stuff 
And I'm now a limbic coach also, because what I know is that even if you're on the perfect diet and taking all of the perfect supplements, if your brain is stuck in a state of fight or flight, if you are constantly releasing cortisol, adrenaline, or epinephrine, your body doesn't have a chance to repair. Yeah. And my brain is stuck in a state of fight or flight. And so I threw myself into limbic work because half the protocols I had already gone through, some made me better, some made me worse. Um, yeah, there was no risk and I didn't have any other options. I had already, already been through functional medicine school. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. Although I guess I was just like happy at 60% more, like I, yeah. I was better working. And, um, so I threw myself into limbic work. I had no idea my body could pretty much recover call myself recovered now like I'm in remission I would say I'm 95% recovered meaning like um just like anybody if you if you drove your car like a race car it's gonna be hurt so like there are things about my body that um I'm extra careful with mm -hmm. but I would say I'm 90% recovered and so it's limbic work um and there's a practice for an hour a day that you do where you sit in an elevated emotional state um, to teach your body to release uh, dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. I had no idea I could get my whole life back. Yeah. Like, not just my life back, like flourish even more than before when I got sick. Yeah. And so um, that's a miracle. And what's cool is it's not a miracle. Yeah. There's an actual practice to it. There's a way to do it. And other people can have this level of recovery. And so, um, yeah. Yay. Oh, wow. Amazing. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story. I think, you know, this is such a classic uh, way that these things unfold, right? Where it's like one little thing and then another little thing, but it's like a snowball going down a hill, right? Where all of a sudden you can't even hold up your head at work, right? And you're like, wow, I am really sick and I really need some kind of intervention that I'm not getting from the conventional medicine system. And I'm so sorry that you were so invalidated. I mean, I, I know so many of us have that kind of experience, right? But, um, you know, the things that I hear that doctors say to people, you know, like everyone has gas and bloating, like these kinds of things that are so normal. And it's like, no, no, that's, that's not true, actually. <laughs> You know, so I'm so glad that you're able to keep looking um, in other places. And um, I just think it's so interesting the way you talk about like, you know, you you did these different approaches and some things got better, right? But until you really rewired your brain on a deep level, like you didn't get that like deep healing experience. Um, so you mentioned that you did a lot of like antimicrobials, like herbal antimicrobials. Were there other things that you did that like helps that were like a piece of your picture, but didn't quite get you to where you wanted to be? Like what other kind of things did you try? Sure. Um, I figured out I had an issue with lectins. And mm -hmm. so I removed lectins. I then figured out I had an issue with cell silates. So I removed cell silates from my diet. I then figured out I had an issue with oxalates and I removed oxalates from my diet. I got, figured out I had a histamine issue. So I removed histamine foods. Um, I basically, if I could explain to you how I functioned and I was like happy to function this way because at least I was functioning. Uh, if I jumped on my left foot and spin this plate like this and like held this and wore blue and didn't move at all, I was sort of okay. Basically, yeah. if I if I froze my meat and I only ate this food and if I only did this thing and this thing and if I had this supplement, I was mostly okay. Yep. And what yep. I now know is I actually think my brain caused most of those different food intolerances with all of those different things. Meaning when I was doing limbic work, um, I was mostly recovered and I was graduating from functional nutrition and I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to practice? Because when you start doing limbic work, you have to stop researching because I had become a researcher and I was like, yeah. I know all of this fun stuff. And what I didn't realize is that was making me sicker. So when I started doing limbic work, I stopped researching. I stopped all the panic. And, um, 
So I was graduating functional nutrition school and I thought, how am I going to practice if I can't research anything? And so I started listening to, um, I was like, oh, I'll study the thyroid because I don't have thyroid issues. And I started listening to a book on the way to a client's and the guy talked about cold hands and feet. And I went into my client's house and like an hour later, my fingers were frozen and my toes are frozen. And I thought, oh my gosh. Wow. I'm ready. Yeah. And so what, what was mind blowing to me is I heard the symptom and then my body manifested it. Yeah. Now here's what would have happened in my past life. I would have heard that in the book. I would have then felt cold hands and feet. I, and I'm, I'm saying this to everybody listening to this because I know you guys do this. We become advocates for our own health. We listen to all these podcasts and stuff. We hear a thing. If I heard that about the cold hands and feet, my feet got co cold, I would have thought, oh, I have a thyroid issue. They didn't run my labs, right? I would have gone home, panicked, looked through the labs. I need to find a specialist. I need to do all this stuff. Let me get all my labs. What kind of supplement? Was it the iodine? Did that make my thyroid worse? Like, what is going on? Yeah. And all of that panic would have created more issues. And yeah. then I would have been like, for sure, I have a thyroid. And what he did instead is I was like, oh, I am having a limbic <laughs> problem. And I went and worked on my brain yeah. and I calmed my body and the cold hands and feet went away. Yeah. And so I had to wait till my limbic system was fully recovered to be able to like research and look. Yeah. Um, but yes. Yeah. I mean, this is such a good point and it is such a really um, vicious trap that I think a lot of people with chronic illness get stuck in. And, and it's such a good point. Like, we have to do our own research and have to be our own advocate in order to stay alive sometimes, right? But there is this point of like diminishing returns that is like, and most of us go over that line, right? I mean, this is so similar to how PTSD works, right? Where in a really constrained survival situation, we come up with these coping mechanisms to stay alive. And then at some point, those coping mechanisms don't serve us anymore. And they can actually make our life worse. Right. And and then this is how PTSD works. And I think this is exactly what you're talking about, about how this self-advocacy and this research and this kind of Sherlock Holmes mindset, right, can at some point actually start hurting us as opposed to helping us. Yeah, I do think all of the stress and the fear about my health um, is what continued to make me more sensitive to the world, like my yeah. light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, supplement sensitivity. Um, I started to get EMF sensitivity at the end. Um, touch. Um, that was just from my brain being stuck in fight or flight. And that was straight from I had done. I was too hyper vigilant. So yeah. like, oh, this food has a lectin, I just ate it. And like, I knew if I ate this food, it hurt this joint. And if I ate this food, it like flushed my face. And if I did this thing, and so there was like so much panic and it's yeah. actually the vigilance that um, strengthens those neural networks. And we, we actually create the symptoms from our brain. And I know that is hard for people to hear because I was like, no way, this is real. And it's not that the symptom isn't real. It's that the stress, the fear is causing a looping circle, yeah. creating yeah. the issue. Right. And your brain, your body can't heal when you're in a state of fight or flight. And so most people, chronic illness in itself is a scary thing, right? Most people yeah. don't understand. They've been invalidated. Um, we have been, ha we have to be advocates for ourselves. Um, but then we become scared of the world and stressed and panicked. And then we're always talking to our family members about it. And we're always, and that's one of the first things I have uh, when people come for me for limbic coaching or for nutrition is they have to stop talking to their family members about their health. So yeah. we have to start growing that the neural networks in their life that are around health. But it is whatever people's conditions are, the human body is amazing yeah. resilient and it can recover and yeah. so if you're like trapped and you have a condition you just haven't met the right practitioner yet and um i invite you to not stop the process yeah um and or you might be with the right practitioner too many people jump ship mm. some people are like always looking for the next thing and they don't actually 
move through. So I would invite people to find somebody who has recovered themselves, who can actually walk you through the process. Yeah. 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 And I really appreciate you clarifying that because I think this is where sometimes we lose people because, you know, we, I mean, I've had the experience that you had as well, where, you know, you're totally gaslit and dismissed about very real symptoms that you're having, you know, from the, the medical industry, right? Like I was having, you know, all these debilitating symptoms in every system of my body. And I, you know, like, had someone put like hysteria in my medical <laughs> chart, you know? Um, so I totally get that like trauma of being invalidated. And I think sometimes when people talk about limbic system retraining, you know, and brain retraining, what it sounds like is, no, it really is just all in your head. It's just like a fancier way to say it. Um, and so if I'm hearing you right, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying is it's not, it's not that it's all in your head. Like, it's not that the physiological experience is not real, right? And there are physiological factors to what you're going through, but it's just that we get stuck in these neural loops in our brain that actually exacerbate the development of those symptoms as opposed to um, reduce them and and calm our bodies. Is that how you would say it? Or, or can you expand on that a little more? The symptoms are not in somebody's head. They're very real. And I know because I had hundreds of weird, random symptoms that doctors dismiss that natural practitioners were like, oh, yes, that's a thing. And I sort of minimized everything that was going on because it was so extreme. Um, the symptoms are real. But the reason why my body was not recovering is because my brain was in a state of fight or flight. Yeah. That fight or flight caused so many stress chemicals that I actually couldn't repair. And that stress actually then caused more symptoms to come. Yeah. So it wasn't in my head like I made it up. Um, it was my brain from being stressed out um, was causing my body to break down. Yeah. 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 Um, the, the other things that I want to say is I was thinking recently is I have been diagnosed with two medical conditions that I told I would have lifelong. I had six, six different psychiatrists tell me I have major depressive disorder. I would have it my whole life. My brain is broken. I had four psychiatrists tell me I was had anxiety. I had two psychiatrists tell me I was bipolar and I had one tell me I had ADHD because he had me take the test and it proved that I had these things. Mm -hmm. They all told me, every single one of them, that I had to be on these drugs for my entire life. They would put me on something that would give me awful side effects and they would say, oh, we're going to have to put another one. And like, then it was like a nightmare to get off these things and to detox from these drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I can tell you is their story of my brain was broken, it didn't release the neurochemicals appropriately, was wrong. I don't have one of those conditions. I'm a very happy, flourishing person. Um, my brain was broken because my body was on fire. My yeah. gut was broken, which made my brain on fire, which meant it couldn't function right. Yeah. So I want to say to anybody out there who's been diagnosed with a label, it's not who you are. That doesn't have to be your life. That is a symptom. And I try so hard to explain this to clients. Depression is like a pimple or a headache. It is a symptom that the body is producing that when the body is in balance, won't be there. Yeah. Um, and when people are normally given these labels, because normally depression and mental disorders come with chronic illness, mm -hmm. and that's often because our gut is broken <laughs> and it needs fixed. Um, but I think doctors give a label and then people think, oh, I'm, I have depression. Yeah. Like it's something you have like that. No, it's like a pimple. Just think the pimple goes away and yeah. the body heals. The headache yeah. goes away. Um, and so, and I don't mean that lightly, and I'm not saying for anybody to come off their meds on their own, but yeah. with the right practitioner, and when you heal your body appropriately, and you do limbic work, um, your brain will flourish. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah. No, it's, it, music to my ears. I mean, this is my whole thing, right? I mean, we, <laughs> our species has <laughs> survived hundreds of thousands of years in very adverse circumstances, right? I mean, just the idea that, like, we would just have these, you know, malfunctionings in our brain and body that are just, like, unsolvable, that is just, like, the way we are genetically, like, it makes no sense, right? If you, like, step back and look at the big picture, like, no, we evolved to, like, survive and flourish and reproduce and, like, live full lives, you know, and, and be a part of nature and be a part of the world. And so, yeah, I mean, it is, it's a symptom. It is saying, like, something is imbalanced in your body, right? Right. Um, but, uh, I, I just love this perspective that like, we are always capable of rebuilding ourselves or rewiring ourselves, you know, whatever the root cause or root causes ends up being. So yeah, thank you for, for being really clear about that. Um, and, and like, I, this is why I love interviewing people who have had their own journey because it's like living proof, right? You know, people who had all these diagnoses who like now don't, you know, um, <laughs> And, and I had the same experience. I mean, this is part of the reason that I kind of like veered away from the mental health field, you know, because that's my initial training is because I was, you know, doing talk therapy both as a professional and for myself for mental health conditions, you know, that I thought I just had, you know, and, you know, nothing really shifted that much. Like I learned to cope with the symptoms better for sure. Like it's not like the therapy did nothing. I, I was able to be a little more functional, but it wasn't until I actually really started rebuilding my gut, you know, and my brain, you know, from the cell up um, that, um, you know, things completely shifted for me. And it's like, I became a totally different person, you know, but at the same time, I think part of why all those physical things I did took so well, you know, and in the scheme of things, I made a fairly, I mean, it was years, but <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, I made a fairly quick recovery, you know, um, is because I also took uh, like nervous system retraining practices very, very seriously. And I didn't know about limbic system retraining at the time. I didn't know that that language around it, but it's really what I was doing. Like I was doing meditation practices and I was doing movement practices and I was doing, you know, yoga and I was doing all these things that the way I was approaching them was retraining my nervous system. Um, and then, you know, as, uh, you know, I started talking to you and, and all the limbic system retraining stuff that I do. And I, I just think it's so fascinating that you have such a very clear template for how you go about this with people in the most effective way possible. You know, I just kind of stumbled on it in, in my own exploration. But do you feel um, like giving a little bit more detail into the kinds of practices that you did and that you do with clients to help this limbic system retraining? training happen? Yeah, so it's hard to give me, it's hard for me to give exact details. What I can tell you is that a lot of people think, oh, yeah, I'm meditating and I'm, I'm coloring with my left hand or I have a morning routine. Um, if they have, se if they have severe limbic hypersensitivity, like I did, where you're reacting to chemicals and your environment and um, you're overstimulated from the world, um, part of that I thought was my personality, like, oh, I only have so much bandwidth, I can yeah. only do so much. I didn't know that that was limbic hypersensitivity, but there's an hour practice that you do a day. And so that's something that you have to learn. And then throughout the day, you have to pattern interrupt. So, and this isn't a joke, like this is, you cannot discuss your illness. So what we focus on, if you picture a big spotlight, what you put your energy on grows, those neural networks strengthen. Um, and so you have to stop talking about your condition. You have to stop thinking about your condition. And that was the hardest in the beginning is when I first started this work, I um, unfollowed all health practitioners. I unsubscribed from everything. I um, stopped talking about my condition. And then what I realized is my brain all day, every day had been thinking about my health. Yeah. What is in this product? What is in my food? Did I have a histamine reaction? Did I take a supplement? Did I whatever? Blah, 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 blah. And I had to pattern interrupt all those thoughts about my health. So I'd be like, no, 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 Limby. No, thanks. Thanks, but no, thanks, Limby. Yeah. And so I had to slowly start building neural networks. Um, there is a full practice that you do throughout the day to move your brain in a different direction. But mostly it's this hour practice that you do a day sitting in an elevated emotional state that um, and you have to be willing like you have to have grit. So I did it for a, a while before I really started noticing things. 
Yeah. I think a lot of times people start stuff in a healing journey and like two weeks in they're like, that didn't work. <laughs> Next thing. And uh, you can't rewire 30 years of limbic issues in two weeks, you know, yeah. it takes six months to two years, but you yeah. can have yeah. radical shifts in the first six months. Um, so if somebody is stuck and they've been doing all of the things for a lot of years, I would highly, highly, highly recommend uh, hiring a limbic coach and getting somebody who has really recovered with their limbic work yeah. um, to have that alongside the diet. Now I help people with diets too, but um, the limbic stuff, like, that has given me a flourishing life. That yeah. wasn't just like band-aids. And I hate to say that all the like don't eat lectins and don't eat oxalates and all of this stuff was a bit like a band-aid, right? Because it like helped me get to a place, but I wasn't fully robustly recovered. Well, it didn't um, explain like why your body was reacting to lectins or why your body was reacting like, to oxalates, right? It didn't, it didn't explain why my gut wasn't healing so that I could then tolerate more of them. Right. Okay. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, exa yeah. so exactly what you're saying, like the, it, the issue was my gut was not fully repairing. I kept removing more and more and more and more and more. And I was on this healing diet, but why was my gut not healing? Yeah. Why yeah. wasn't I getting better so I could function with all of the stuff out, but I wanted to be able to flourish. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, exactly. It is exactly what you said. But my issue was that my gut wasn't actually repairing because my body was in a state of fight or flight, which keeps your gut permeable. Um, yeah. And then you can't repair. Right. You can't take a supplement right. for that. If you're stressed out and you're panicked all the time, you can't take a supplement to fix your gut. Like, you have to calm down. Yeah. Like, you have to yeah. do some limbic work. Yeah. 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 And I, yeah. I would say, well, first of all, I think that's a really good recommendation that like, if you've been doing this for years, you know, all this healing stuff for years, and you're not seeing the results that you want, then yeah, you've got to look at these neural pathways, right? Because it's not that you're not necessarily doing the right things. And some amount of restriction can be helpful for healing in mm -hmm. the short term. But at some point, like, you should not be so sensitive if your body is truly healing. And if you're stuck there, then like this is the time to start looking at that work. Um, and I would say like, I think a lot of people with chronic illness have been anxious their entire life. I mean, I know I was, <laughs> right? And until I really started regulating my nervous system, like I didn't know actually what it was like to be like in a calm or peaceful or regulated state. Like I didn't even realize how dysregulated I was. And I have found, I mean, I've been healing for like five years now, right? So I find that each step in my journey, like I just year after year, I like keep peeling back another layer of like, oh, I still was not as regulated as I thought I was, right? Like two years in, I would have told you like, oh, my nervous system is totally regulated at this point. And now five years in, I was like, oh no, it wasn't. <laughs> Now I, you know, it just keeps like the layers keep pulling back. And I think that it just shows what a state of chronic dysregulation, like our culture and most people in our culture are, are in that like, there is such a deep well of like, calmness and well being and regulation and peace in yourself in the world that you just keep uncovering the more of this work that you do. So, you know, even if you feel like, no, I'm, I'm not too anxious. I, I think I'm okay. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you would agree with this, but I would say like, mm, you might actually still be dysregulated and just in it's so normalized, you might not realize. Would you say that's true? Yeah. So I, I had this client um, and he was, he came from the medical field um, and he came to me, which was like an honor. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and he was so calm and zen. Like he looked from the outside had a wonderful marriage, was such a kind soul, yeah. spoke slowly. His brain was in such a state of fight or flight, his body wow. couldn't repair. Wow. And when he started doing the act, and I thought, I wonder if it's going to work for him. This, this, this dude's like so, like, but his brain, his thoughts were in a fight or flight. Yeah. Um, his body pro probably had been from 20 years of chronic illness. Um, yeah. And so I do know somebody had told me about this limbic practice my first year of getting sick. 
and they were like you have to do this thing for an hour a day and I was like yeah no thanks and I was like I'm gonna go it's find a, a doctor yeah. and a pill yeah there's a doctor and a pill that like no way I don't even do I mean it made zero sense to me yeah. and I was for sure that there was a pill that was like gonna fix me or something yeah. or a doctor and then eight years later I became really willing I was like okay that thing <laughs> that's not gonna hurt me at all yeah yeah um, um let's do that yeah yeah yeah, and and it is yeah. partly the attitude you approach it with, right? Like I I have had clients, you know, because DNRS, you know, some people watching probably are familiar with this, right? It's a very popular method of limbic system retraining. Um, I have had clients come to me, and I start talking to them about the nervous system and the brain and and regulation and all this kind of stuff, and they'll be like, "Oh, I did DNRS, you know, for six months, and it did nothing." I mean, I, I've heard that a lot of times, right? Yeah. And what I always ask is did you do it like a task that needed to be checked off your to-do list, right? Or did you really feel it? Did you really surrender to it, right? And um, I think that is a, a missing factor that a lot of people don't think about. Like they think it's just like, oh, it's just another thing I do, like brushing my teeth or taking my supplements. Yeah. So um, I've run across a lot of that. I've also run across a lot of people that are like, oh, I did the GAPS diet. It didn't work for me. And then you like hear what they were actually eating. I'm like, you, but you weren't doing it right. Like right. that's, that's not actually accurate. And um, I actually recovered through DNRS. Um, and then since I've gone through most of the major limbic programs. And so I combine all of those programs together and I take the meat and potatoes of most of those. And that's what I teach as a limbic coach. But when I was going into this, the symptom that I had was so debilitating that I was like, I'm doing everything. And so yeah. um, I went through DNRS. I then hired my own private limbic coach. Um, I then joined limbic groups. I made limbic friends. So when I hired the limbic coach, I found out, wow, I wasn't even doing my rounds right. Mm. There were so many tips that I actually needed. And so like I built this whole limbic community around me. And so, um, yeah, there are many, many people who have like, yeah, that didn't work, but they weren't actually applying it right. And they didn't even know. Yeah. And then they get exhausted because they were like trying so hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So having support um, and somebody who's really educated in it that can help you through like um, is so important, just like a nutritionist is so important. Like, and as a practitioner, I have a practitioner like, yeah, like even with everything I know, like we can't see everything on our own. Like it's good to have a second set of eyes on us. Yeah. 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 That support is so like essential. I mean, we're talking about this entire lifestyle change, this entire like major shift in your thinking patterns and the way you're interacting in the world and being in the world. And yeah, it, you just, it's so hard to do that on your own. So yeah, that's, that's really great advice to make sure you're getting as much support as possible during the process. Um, do you want to share any just like last thoughts or last things and then tell people like about your coaching business and how to get in touch with you and all that? Yeah. Um, you know, I've recovered in my life from mental health issues, from gut issues, from a severe eating disorder, from I'm sober. Um, the amount of things that I have been through that take some people down is unreal. And what I want to tell you, like whatever you have, like you can literally be free of that. Like, please hear me. I know the human body recovers. I know you are resilient and strong. You, whatever your condition is, no matter what your brain says, you don't know, mine is so complex. I would go to doctors with papers this thick, right? And they're like, I don't even know what to say to you. Your body can recover. Your heart can recover. You Like, don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. I tell all of my clients, all things are possible all things are possible you just have to have hope and find somebody as a beacon and 
I just, I know I've seen too many miracles and recovery stories. And I sort of hate using the word miracle because it's like, oh, this is like this anomaly. It's right. not an anomaly. It can happen for you too. Sometimes it's complex. It's complex. And we have to take little puzzle pieces and you need somebody to help you keep putting all these puzzle pieces together. It's probably not going to be like the snap of a finger, but your body can recover. You can flourish you can probably get off these meds, right? Like you can rock life and don't ever stop. Don't settle until you get there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Courtney, you're such a gem. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. your wisdom today. I think this is just a piece that a lot of people miss in their healing journey, you know, and it's so, so important. So, um, you know, I, I think like, you know, in my journey, I started in the mental health field and then I was like, I got such these incredible results from changing my nutrition and changing my lifestyle. And so I started working on that. But the more now I'm doing this work, the more I kind of like come back around to being like, oh, the nervous system, <laughs> you know, and the brain and, and this stuff is like so important. So thank you. And your words are so inspiring. So I really appreciate you. Um, yeah. If people want to do coaching with you, um, do they just get a hold of you on Instagram or how how do you do that? So they can find me at Final Key Wellness on Instagram, or you can email me at Courtney at Final Key Wellness. And um, yeah, I do limbic coaching and nutrition. And then I help people with eating disorder issues. And then I also have a program that helps people change their life for the last time. So like if they've been on a yo-yo plan, like they follow one of these health protocols, but they can't really stick to it. The program is built to help you stick to it. Great. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, um, yes. Thank you for your time and for being such a beacon of light for everybody out there. You know, it's a, it's a gift that you're giving this to the world. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, I am going to stop the recording and uh, we will be in touch. <laughs> okay.